Now, Damon Kowarski uh, is a Victorian-based artist who works in delicate drawings and prints, often from life scenes. He's rarely in Australia as he travels to residences all over the world. Uh, what a life that would be to be an artist travelling the world. Currently, he is in Tunisia. But Mel Chambers managed to catch up with him earlier and spoke to him about his work. Artists travel the world, letting new places infuse their artwork. But Victorian artist Damon Kowarski has next-level creative wanderlust, taking his precise, intricate and evocative work all over the world through solo shows, residencies and teaching posts. I was lucky enough to catch up with Damon to talk about his work and his experiences. Thanks for taking a pit stop to uh, talk to us, Damon. It's a pleasure, Mel. It's so good to uh, to meet you, and you're an extremely busy man. How long are you in town for? I think it's 17 days, so I'm just back from four months in China on two residencies, one in the south of China near Shenzhen and one in the north near Tianjin or Beijing. On the 22nd of August, my partner and I head to Serbia for a residency and an exhibition and then on to Tunisia for two residencies, and we're back in early November. Well, we'll get, we'll get on to your travels in, in just a moment because there's a hell of a lot going on there. But I, I'd just like to talk about your work. You, you work across several mediums and your work seems to evolve according to where you are, but how would you describe your work how would you describe so i'm primarily a printmaker and i work mainly with etching on copper plates but when either facilities are not available or different possibilities present themselves i work with large-scale color drawing right okay your work also seems to be uh kind of connected by a sort of a palette a, a, a subdued sort of beautiful earthy sort of palette is that fair to say is that because Yes, yeah. and certainly the the colours as you see them in the world are often fairly subdued and in certainly in places like Australia, the, the greens that you see are not highly keyed, highly saturated colours. Also, the process of working with etching has its own demands on what kind of colours you can use. You've worked in an extraordinary number of places, so how, how did that start? Uh, was that always the plan or...? Well, it wasn't exactly the plan, but I started travelling at about the same time as I started studying art. So when I was travelling, I would take sketchbooks with me and wherever I was, I'd be drawing. And that kind of process of travelling and drawing, bringing it back to my studio in Melbourne or to university, making work out of those drawings from the travels became the sort of working methodology of how I produced work. And, of course, when you're overseas or when you're in some place and you're sitting and drawing, people find you, artists find you, and equally I would seek out artists, galleries, residency opportunities and, and simply go and say hello because I was there making stuff, it was an instant kind of introduction to the artistic and cultural life of whatever place I was in. Right. And the residencies that you've done, do you arrive with any preconceptions of, of what you're going to do or do you do you improvise it? Are you an improviser or a planner? Well, I'll plan broad structures, like I'm going to make drawings, so I'll take the materials for those drawings. And then in the first instance, I spend a couple of weeks walking around the place I'm in and drawing extensively. And what I produce in the studio on location comes out of that encounter with the actual place. So I might do a little research, I might look at pictures, I might read something about the history of the place, but it's very much about going somewhere, looking, seeing, being present, drawing, and then from that on-the-ground experience, pulling out what I will make in the studio there. Right, okay. So how did your first residency happen? How did your first, that first leap, how did that happen? I'd say the first real residency was at Townhouse Gallery Cairo in 2003 and I had been invited or volunteered to participate in an archaeological dig in Dakhla in the western deserts of wow. Egypt as an archaeological illustrator at the end of 2002. So because I was in Cairo, because I was in Egypt, because I was working on this archaeological dig, I Googled, it was a tool, yeah. and I saw what the galleries, what the residencies were, and Townhouse was there, and I turned up and introduced myself. And there's a lot of contingency in everything, and as it happened, a program had been cancelled at Townhouse around the same time as I arrived, and I was able to take a studio space there for a month. Wow, OK. And if you hang around in Melbourne or wherever too mm. long... Do you get itchy feet? Do you? 
I was here for the two and a half years of COVID. So yeah. that was a really solid period, but I had a lot of work to go on with. As soon as that was over, uh, my partner and I basically started travelling again in Australia initially and then overseas. That's fantastic that you've got a, a supportive partner who, who will who will go with you. Well, on, she on... is a printmaker and artist. I see. So Terrific. we work side by side. Fantastic. So what are you up to right now? Well, I will be on a residency in Tunisia as this goes to air. It's a two-part residency, one in the south in the desert and then the second on the coast, and that's organised by a Tunisian calligrapher and artist called Abdul Razak Hamouda. Fantastic. Well, I love your work. It's fantastic, and we really want uh, the listeners to see it. So where can they find your, your okay, work? Okay, so either via my website, which is damon.kowarski.id.au, or on my Instagram, which is Damon Kowarski. Thank you so much, Damon. Thank you, Mel. That was Mel Chambers there talking with Damon Kowarski and you can check his stuff out there via those web, those links. And thank you so much, Mel, for another great interview. You're listening to Arts Weekly.